In this video I'll look at the topic of kinematics where we'll look at the motion of a point along a straight line according to some given function. So the point represented by point P moves along our straight line um, according to or relative to a fixed point or origin and S of T is the displacement of P from the origin. Time is greater than or equal to zero as our point moves. So if S of t equals 2t plus 3, that's a linear function. If we were to work out S of 0, the displacement at time 0, S of 1, displacement at time 1, we'd end up with 3 for S of 0. If uh, t equals 1, we've got 2 plus 3 is 5. If uh, t is 2, we've got 4 plus 3 is 7. And we have 9 here. Notice that given that's a linear function then the, uh, the rate of change or the slope is 2 we can see our values are going up by 2 each time and that's a linear pattern. And we can represent this motion on a motion graph so we have um, our initial position is at 3 so that is when t equals 0 then we have um, t equals 1 Lecure at this point here we have 5 centimetres from the origin and then 7 centimetres t equals 2 and 9 centimetres would have been t equals 3. And I can demonstrate that motion along our vertical y-axis here. So point A occurs when uh, x equals 0 or time is 0. So there's my um, t function. So 2t should be plus 3 there. And if I move the point, we can see it's a constant rate of change. Now I can demonstrate that motion along our y-axis here. So when x equals 0, or time is 0, we are at this point here. And if we were to move our point, we can see that motion there is at a constant rate of change. So let's look at some other functions for our displacement. So here we have a quadratic function and s of 0 would be negative 3, s of 1, plug in 1 here we get 1 plus 2 is 3, take 3 is 0, then the other value is 5, 12, 21. Notice that the, uh, the change between these values is up by 3, up by 5, 7 and 9. And when your values change in increasing evens or odds, that's an indicator that we have a quadratic function, as we can tell from our equation here. And once again, here's our motion graph. So um, at t equals 0, we're at negative 3. t equals 1, we're at 0. And then at 5, 12, etc. All right, let's look at a... Uh, a sketch on geometry sketch pad. So here's our displacement function x squared plus 2x take 3 or t squared plus 2t take 3 in terms of t. So at t equals 0 our point will start here and if we observe so a is increasing its rate of change or its uh, speed. Let's look at a, uh, a cubic displacement function so for this cubic function we can see that when x or t equals 0 we're left with negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3 which will be negative 6. So there's our initial position and if we were to animate that point so look at the motion vertically and it seems to be getting slower as the point approaches the turning point here comes to a stop and then it speeds up then at the point of inflection it will start to slow again and stationary point here it will come to a stop before going back the other way and speed will be increasing. So that was a look at uh, displacement along a straight line. Now uh, displacement, the change in displacement, so S of T2 take S of T1 divided by the uh, change in time is in fact the average velocity. 
the instantaneous velocity would therefore be the derivative of displacement. If we work out the limit as the gap between my points approaches zero for this function here, we end up with uh, our s dash of t. So velocity is the derivative of displacement. And likewise, acceleration, the average acceleration, would be the change in velocity. So subtract these two velocities, divided by the change in time. And once again, as the gap between points approaches zero, we end up with the instantaneous rate of change, in this case the instantaneous acceleration. So acceleration is in fact the derivative of velocity, so v dash of t. Let's look at an, an example question here. We've got a particle moving in a straight line, given that uh, function for displacement. And part A, the average velocity between 2 and 5 seconds. So for part A, we need to work out the uh, values of um, S2 and S5. Uh, S2, we replace 2 in our function here, we get 6 take away 4, which is 2, and S5, we'd have 15 take away 25, which is negative 10. And therefore the uh, average velocity is the uh, change in displacement, so negative 10 take 2 divided by the change in time, which is 5, take 2. So we end up with the negative 12 divided by 3, so negative 4 metres per second. Now part B, we want the instantaneous velocity, so therefore V of t is equal to S dash of t, the change of the uh, the rate of change of displacement. So, if we differentiate the s function, we will get 3 take 2 t. And therefore, if we want the uh, velocity when t equals 2, then all we do is replace 2 in our function here to give us 3 take away 4. So it's negative 1 meter per second. And part c, we want the uh, acceleration function. So acceleration is the change in velocity over time, so we'd differentiate the v function and we'd end up with differentiating v here, we get negative 2 meters per second squared. So you'll notice that the acceleration remains constant.